Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Xi Chen from Genscript Marketing, and I will be your host today. As cell engine therapy has quickly emerged as one of the most transformative innovations in biopharma industry, Genscript offers a series of solutions to make your cell engine therapy research easy. As we will hear today, the one-stop solution for cell therapy workflow will be introduced that enable researchers to scale their operations with accuracy and efficiency. The development, mechanism, and applications of CRISPR gene editing will also be briefly introduced. In today's webinar, you will hear from two presenters. Dr. Yuan Yuanshen, the Director of R&D Development for Protein Products here with GenScript. Dr. Yifan Yu, the Project Manager of Cell Therapy Products. With that, I will turn over to Dr. Yifan to begin today's presentation. Uh, my name is Ethan Yu, the project manager of the Therapy products from GeneScript. Today, I will briefly introduce the current situation of the key raw materials of cell therapy and also share the information of the newly launched cell isolation platform, our cytosine technology. So in today's talk, we will share a picture of the ther cell therapy first, then talk about the support from GeneScript for the cell therapy process and how we are improving or optimizing the process. And lastly, we will take a look at their blooming allogeneic cell therapy market and share some insights about their unmet needs of their raging instruments and the whole solution in this field. Before talking about the current cell therapy market, I would like to give a quick review of what is CAR T. So the reasons people choose CAR T to treat the cancer is that the engineered T cells can better recognize the cancer cells and kill them. Because of the GVHD and the HVGD, this therapy was firstly developed from the autologous, mainly because of their safety concern. So basically, we, are, we can uh, collect the PBMCs from the patient itself, then perform the T cell isolation by using CD4 and CD8 beads. Then using CD3 and CD28 T cell activation beads to stimulate T cells, which can help those cells can have a better transfection successful rate and a higher killing efficiency. And after the activation, normally it would wait for 24 to 48 hours before the gene editing by using the antivirus to transfect the card into the T cell. Then slowly expansion for 10 to 14 days until you have enough number of cells. And lastly, you can formulate the sample and inject back to the patient itself. So the superiority of the CAR T therapy is this point of care treatment can have a extremely high CR and ORR comparing to the traditional drugs. And also, since you're using your own cells to treat yourself, the safety concern can be also uh, neglected. So I think everyone here probably have seen this picture for more than millions of times. So first patient with leukemia who treated by the CAR-T in 2010. Ever since then, the cell therapy starts to enter uh, into a new era with the help of the top immunologist and of course the local authorities. And nothing is better than seeing a kid who suffered from the leukemia now grows a young healthy teenager because of CAR-T. And now we have been believed that the cell therapy is and will be one of the best cure for all kinds of cancer. So until now, uh, there are more than 2,000 cell therapy clinical trials all over the world and over 500 cell therapy companies with their own clinical pipelines. There are seven CAR T therapy uh, which, has, which has been commercialized, including the Celta cell from Legend Biotech, one of our subsidiary companies. However, due to the price of the CAR T therapy is absolutely beyond the reach, almost a half million US dollars per treatment. The sales performance will, I can only say, is not as good as expected. The total sales revenue of CAR T products in 2021 is only 1.79 billion US dollars, which is much lower than other hot products like PD-1, BTK, or ADC. And besides, we know as other cell therapy companies start to start their own commercialization of the products, the competition will become more and more fierce. And to make sure their own products can outperform other CAR T products, efficacy is one thing. Another thing 
is definitely how to control the cost. So let's take a look at the listing price of uh, these commercialized car T products first. So even though governments from different countries figured their way out by providing the patient uh, installation plan, still most of the patient cannot afford it. Meanwhile, from the figure here on the right, uh, it is clear that the material cost of one dose is almost reaching 80,000 US dollars, not mention but extremely high labor cost. But we have to admit that there isn't too much profit for the cell therapy companies. To solve this issue, lowering the cost of CAR T manufacturing is the only way out. And one of the best ways is to scale up. I mean, to convert the CAR T from the autologous to allogeneic. Among the CAR T production, we can see for each step, they are likely they are like multiple suppliers. However, for the cell isolation reagent, more specifically, clinical used cell isolation beads, there's only one supplier. We know they are like countless cell therapy companies, but cell isolation beads supplier. There's only one. I mean, regarding to the GMP manufacturing process, it is not entirely compliant since there, there must be a backup supplier. Not mention that the long and uncertain delivery time of those clinical used isolation beads. The so average two to three months delivery time. Meanwhile, the shelf life of the products are only three to six months. The top right figure includes the delivery time of some products we bought from this single supplier. Not only us, many of our customers were complaining about that after they received the beads, there isn't much time left for them to use it. So from the uh, last slide, we can find out that there are still so many issues and unmet needs from the car team manufacturing, regard, uh, including high cost, long delivery time, limited options of suppliers. So here, please allow me to share some news from Earth, GeneScript. So our support for the cell therapy um, process uh, it, uh, is listed here. So among the whole cell therapy process, we first focused on the uh, magnetic beads technology, then expanded into cell isolation beads, T-cell activation reagent, cell isolation instrument, and other products. Our goal is to help the cell therapy uh, company to lower their manufacturing cost and increase their pro profitable space. So regarding to this part, we can provide a one-stop solution from the isolation reagent, columns, tubing set, and to the automatic and cell isolation instruments. So the technology of cell isolation beads have been uh, come out coming out almost for several decades. But why are there only few suppliers, especially the GMP grid uh, nano-sized nano one? There's only one. Now, including Earth, uh, here, uh, I, would, I will give some ideas from the company level why Earth's gene script can develop this technology. So cell isolation beads are consisted of the magnetic core and the antibody. To develop the beads which have, which have their outstanding isolation performance, it requires both good quality beads and the suitable antibody. And GeneScript has 10 years experiences in developing magnetic uh, bead product, and we have our track record in this field. Along these 10 years, we gathered very experienced scientists from multiple fields, including physics, chemical engineering, uh, chemistry, immunology, uh, molecular biology, and so on. Now I mentioned that we have the building GMP facility to acquire the most regulated GMP products. Meanwhile, our antibody is provided by one of the GeneScript subsidiary companies, GeneScript ProBio, where they have a powerful and professional antibody discovery platform. Through multiple clone selection and thousands of process optimization, and condition screening, we can use the most suitable antibody for our bees. And after we have the uh, most suitable antibody and best quality of bees, our final products were all validated, validated by Legend Biotech to make sure the best isolation performance of our bees. I'm pretty sure not every company can have, can have all these three platforms. 
So more specifically, let's have a, a closer look on our cell isolation bits. Right figure is the structure of our cell isolation and activation bits. The size of our bits uh, is around 100 nanometers. And the whole matrix is not only non-toxic and biodegradable. The left figure is the uh, specs and the features of our bits. We can find out that uh, our cell isolation bits can achieve a very nice isolation performance regarding to the purity and the yield. And also, this is also comparable with our competitors' products. Meanwhile, our activation bits show a better expansion rate and a higher undifferentiated amount uh, than using the similar, similar products from our competitor. Safety here means that uh, regarding the certain amount of the target cells, the absolute number of particle or the iron content for using our bits is less than using competitor's products. But due to the size of our bits, it doesn't need another step of removal after the isolation, which has saved a lot of a huge amount of time and process control. So picture here, we summarize the overall uh, offerings from GeneScript for their cell isolation. We have cell isolation bits targeting different subtype of, subtype of T cells and also the NK cells and the stem cells. Also, the closed system tubing set and the cell isolation instrument Cytosync 1000 can be supported for the CAR-T manufacturing. And here is the representative application data for the CD4 and CDA isolation. A side-by-side -side comparison of cell isolation bits, tubing set, and the instrument between ours and the competitors is shown here. We can observe that our isolation solution can provide a comparable isolation performance regarding to the purity, recovery, and the cell viability. Besides, our instrument can provide a customized process based on our customer's need. For example, if you need a higher purity or recovery, we can work with you to, to realize this point by adjusting the software. Now, all in all, our credo is what you need is what we pursue. Except for the isolation raging CD4 and CD8 bits, we would also like to introduce one of our blockbuster products the NSEED T-cell activation reagent. So for the expansion reagent, a better way to show it is definitely by for change because that is more relevant to the downstream application. So here we choose three different donors, include, including two B PBMC and, and one leukopack. Top three figures are the phenotypes for these three donors after the isolation and the bottom pictures are the corresponding expansion force results. Uh, red line is the activation results using our bits, and the blue line is from using competitors' bits. So here we can find out that our bits uh, have an even higher activation efficiency than uh, our competitor, which is consistent with the activation signal uh, CD25 and CD69 uh, results. We also would like to show the memorial, memo, uh, memorial phenotype. So for the memorial phenotypes of T cells, we all know that uh, T cells matures from T naive to memory stem and T cells to central memory T and to effector memory T cells. Normally, the less mature of these T cells are more suitable for the downstream application uh, regarding to the, uh, to the card transfection or successful read and the killing efficiency. Thus, from the data here, the amount of the TSCM and TCM after the activation using our bits is comparable or higher than using completers' bits, which means using our activation reagent can have a better can have a better benefits for the downstream application in the CAR T manufacturing. From the last couple of slides, we can observe that our activation bits are better than, uh, than the current uh, products on the market and regarding to the cell expansion force and memorial phenotype. Actually, we were asked uh, so many times that is there any disadvantage for expanding so fast or are those gene script bits activate T cells more exhausted than using, com uh, using a competitor's product? The left figure here shows the exhaustion marker 
Leg 3, Team 3, and PD-1 were monitored after activation for 14 days. There's no difference of the uh, expression of those exhaustion marker between using our bees and the, the current products on the market. And also the red figure, the uh, proliferation data, if you focus on the expansion rate from day 15 to day 17, it is obvious that the acti activated T cells using our bees uh, proliferate much faster than using uh, the other products. And this res results indicates that the activity cells by our base are more active after activation than using uh, the other product. So besides the pro the products which were commonly used in the autologous CAR T, gene script can also provide some products which target in the allogeneic cell therapy market. Before that, I would like to share some of our ideas about this field regarding to the key raw materials and the instrument. So we all know that the advantage of the allogeneic cell therapy is the affordable price and the short delivery time due to the off-the-shelf properties. However, there are still many challenges. I think thanks to the, these top scientists who already know how to conquer overcome their GVHG for the allo. By performing the TCR alpha beta depletion or using another type of cells like NK cells. However, there is no clear answer for the challenge of the larger sample size regarding to the devices or instrument for each step, such as the isolation, expansion, or the final uh, finish and filling. So here we're going to talk about uh, talk a little about uh, the raging TCR alpha beta beats. We know one of the challenges of the allogeneic cell therapy is how to come overcome the GBHD I just mentioned. And the scientists have discovered that this can be solved by performing the TCR alpha beta depletion using the beads. So in the current market, um, only uh, there's one uh, there's only one GMP grade TCR alpha beta kit. However, this kit can uh, have it contains two vials of anti-biotin beads and one vial of biotin lady TCR for beta antibody. And this is so-called the indirect labeling uh, cell isolation method or the two-step method, which means you have to incubate the antibody first with the cell sample, then do the centrifuge to wash and remove the free antibody in some extent, then add the beads to perform the incubation again. And this two-step isolation is very time-consuming, tedious, and when comparing to the one-step isolation. And this one-step isolation can be exactly provided by the TC alpha beta bits from GeneScript. And our TC alpha beta is pictured on the bottom panel, which can be directly incubated with the cell sample. So uh, you can imagine this would be more time-saving, easy to scale up, and also can give you a better cell status after the isolation because one step can minimize the cell injury at a great extent. So regarding to the application uh, the, the application of our TCR for beta beads, it can be used both as depletion and enrichment. And figure A here is the flex data for the depletion. One million PBMCs were started with the depletion using a gene script TCR for beta beads. And after the depletion, the purity of the TC alpha, uh, alpha beta negative cells was described, uh, described in the figure B, which shows we have the comparable results with the competitor's TC alpha beta depletion kits. Except for the uh, raging, we already uh, used our way to perfect this imperfection. Uh, from auto to allo, the sample size before the isolation will be 100 to 1000 times bigger. Normally for the R2, total cells of the starting sample will be around uh, 10 to 9 uh, level, this level. But for the allo, the total cells before the TC alpha beta depletion is around 10 to 11 or even uh, 10 to 12. We know the current isolation instrument can only precise uh, the amount of the cells for R2. So, there's no instru uh, there's no instrument or uh, there's only limited solutions in the current market for the allogeneic cell therapy. And even though uh, authorities highly suggest 
do not split the samples into many instruments, uh, this is their only way out. Allo cell therapy companies have to uh, split uh, the sample and use multiple cell isolation instruments. And not mention the extremely long isolation time, which, uh, which would cause the cell injury and the low viability. So fortunately, you have GeneScript. We are about to launch our second generation cell isolation instrument, Cytosync 2000, uh, which is developed for the uh, design designed for the allogeneic uh, markets. The multi-channel design can make sure it has a high throughput, which made the needs for the other market. Meanwhile, it has the ability to help uh, help to increase the isolation efficiency by decreasing the isolation time, which can enhance their cell status. And the fully closed and audit tracking system uh, let it can be used for the cell therapy manufacturing process. So, all right, uh, here is the overall picture of our Cytosync GMP grid products. Our building GMP facility can guarantee the quality of our GMP products in a great extent, which can support the cell therapy companies for their R&D or BLA applications. And meanwhile, we can provide a smaller size of GMP grid CD4 and CD8 bits, which can help their cell therapy company save more co their manufacturing costs. Because we, we know most of people won't use the whole 7.5 mil for, for one local pack. So currently, we have both an RU grid and GMP grid cell isolation activation magnetic uh, beads, and also the comp uh, compatible manual separation system, including the magnetic racks, different size of the magnet, and columns. The most importantly, we not only can provide the automatic cell isolation instrument, uh, Cytosync 1000, also the first of its kind, specially designed for the allogeneic mar market, the next generation high throughput multi channel cell isolation instrument Cytosync 2000. Besides, uh, on 2023, next year, we are planning to launch uh, much more products, including cell isolation beads against other targets and some solutions for the, uh, for other steps in the car key. So here is the uh, email of our company. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or need some trial kits for a test. All right, um, thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for your time and attention. Lastly, I would like to mention that most, most of our products have been tested by multiple external customers. Uh, those were leading uh, cell therapy companies or the, uh, the academic institute. And so far, all the beta test uh, testing feedbacks are very positive. So please feel free to ask me any questions you want. Thank you. Thanks, Yifan, for the informatic presentation about cell therapy. In this section, we will talk about gene editing, which is a state-of-art approach that normally works together with cell therapy. With you today, my name is Yuan Shen. I'm the director of R&D department for protein products at GeneScript. Especially, I will talk about how to optimize the gene editing efficiency in RNP-mediated CRISPR test in cells. Discussion has three major parts. Begin with the introduction of CRISPR-Cas9 system, and then talk with about the optimization of the gene editing experiment. And finally, we give you the GeneScript solution. Now, let's start the discussion about the basic introduction of CRISPR-Cas9 system. Cell therapy is now the superstar in pharmacy. Here we demonstrated a simplified procedure for generating CAR T cells. Isolated T cells from TDMC are first activated and then gene edited with multiple methods, among which CRISPR-Cas9 is now become trending. So what is the CRISPR? CRISPR is short for cluster regularly space shortened palindromic repeat. The CRISPR-Cas is a microbe adaptive immune system fighting against pathogens. Its RNA guided nucleus to cleave foreign genetic elements. Six types of CRISPR systems have been identified in various types of microbials, and among which the type 2 is one of the best characterized. In nature, this test system is composed of two key components, 
a CRISPR associated nucleotide and guide RNA consisting cRNA and a tracer RNA complex. The gene editing via CRISPR Cas9 utilizes an artificial single guide RNA, fgRNA, which is a fusion of cRNA and tracer RNA. With the Watson Crick based pairing, Cas9 is guided to the target DNA by the sgRNA and only introduce DNA double strand bread DSBs, to the locus adjacent of the protospacer adjacent motif pen. Three criti critical components of Cas9 are PEM interaction domain, HNH nucleus domain, and the RAC nucleus domain. The PI domain binds to its recognized site upstream of the pen sequence and then DSBs of the target DNA performed by the other two. The HNH cleaves the target strain, while the RAC cleaves the non-target strain. From the mechanism, it is quite clear that the specific cleavage is achieved by the base pairing between target DNA and sgRNA, as well as the binding of PEM and the PI domain. CRISPR-Cas9 system generates double strand break on target gene, and generally it can be re repelled by two pathways, the non-homologous and joint pathway, and the homology-directed repel pathway. NHEJ gives rise to small indoles and results in loss of function mutation within the target gene which is a mechanism of gene knockout application. HDR can generate specific nucleotide changes, ranging from a single nucleotide change to large insertions, and a scientist utilizes this pathway for in, in desired gene to target cells. Meanwhile, a DNA repair template containing the desired sequence must be delivered into the cell type of interest with the gRNA and the Cas9. Like demonstrated in the picture on right, generally, there are three ways to deliver CRISPR-Cas9 system into cells, DNA, RNA, and RNP. The RNP is a combination of Cas9 nucleus and RNA. Bearing with other two methods, the RNP delivery is popular due to the benefits of high editing efficiency, minimum of target rates, low toxicity, as it is not using virus, there is no risk on gene integration, and also it is DNA-free, and it is also the quickest way of editing. In this, however, the bottleneck of RMP form is the limited delivery feasibility due to the high molecular mass of complex. Currently, electroporation is one of the most popular methods for RNP delivery for gene editing experiments. In this talk, we will focus on the use of electroporation methods delivered RNP into cells for gene editing. With this, now we go to section 2 to discuss how to optimize the gene editing experiment. This is a workflow of CRISPR-Cas9 knockout experiment. We will walk through the whole process step by step. As described in section 1, Cas9 nuclei and sgRNA are the most important components of CRISPR-Cas9 system, forming an RNP to contact the cleavage at targeted genes. Thus, for a successful CRISPR experiment, it is essential and necessary to utilize a proper Cas9 nucleus and design an optimum sgRNA with high activity and specificity. Additionally, the optimization of RNP is also essential to improve the gene editing performance. First, let's start with the selection of Cas9 nucleus. Many Cas9 have for special purposes. For example, one hypothesis is that by neutralization of positive charge residues of non-targeted growth, the 
binding between non-target DNA and sgRNA can be greatly weakened. Thereby, Fongjong developed the BSB Cas9, the highest specific. David Liu, on the other hand, utilized the phage assisted continuous evolution and developed the SP Cas9 mutant with a better PAM compatibility, as well as a higher DNA specific for the X Cas9. Many other methods are developed, including looking for Cas9 proteins from other species, such as EVO Cas9 was found from yeast. With so many Cas9 for use, when it comes to the selection of Cas9 protein, multiple criteria needs to be considered, such as the basic activities, the specificity, PAM selection, and size of protein. First thing first, one should know his purpose clearly and the choice accordingly. Here we have an interesting paper for to share. In this paper, authors developed a method to comprehensively build activity and specificity of Cas9 protein mutants. According to their results, it seems that there is a trend that most of modified Cas9 nuclease with enhanced specificity generally showed a decreased cleavage activity. This reason is may related with the DNA RNA complex, which we will not cut in deep here. But clearly, based on the phenomenon, one should select a suitable Cas9 nucleus based on its purpose. Especially, it is suggested to choose the Cas9 with increased specificity for those applications that will a low of target rate. Here we are showing the experiments of testing various Cas9. In Figure 1, different sources of Cas9 show significant differences on target efficiency with the same screen sgRNA. In Figure 2, different sources of Cas9 nucleases show significant difference in off-target efficiency while maintaining the same or similar on-target efficiency with the same screening sgRNA. From those figures, you can see different mutants of Cas9 nucleus on distinguishedly in both on-target and off-target effects, which remind us again that selecting a proper Cas9 nucleus is very important and it requires experimental screening for specific purposes. Now it comes to the sgRNA part. As we mentioned before, in nature, that RNA is a crRNA tracer RNA complex. crRNA has 20 NT guide sequence, which directs the Cas9 to a 20 NP DNA target. The sgRNA is the chimera of crRNA and the tracer RNA complex, encoded with 20 NT target sequence, highlighted in orange here, which is the most important part for the precise gene editing. The rest of the sequence of sgRNA has endogenous functions and is quite important for binding to sgRNA and Cas9 nucleus, and it is consistent for a specific Cas9 nucleus source. Overall, the specificity of CRISPR assay is determined by the base pairing between sgRNA and target DNA, and the PAM sequence recognized by Cas9 nucleus. Thus, for different target editing, with the selected Cas9 nucleus, it is only required to change the target sequence present in the gRNA. But how to design a well performed sgRNA for a specific CRISPR test? First, the design of sgRNA depends on your specific experiment. For the considerations of gene sequence targeted by the sgRNA, there are some basic rules for gene knockout and knock-in. For knock-in, we need to select the sgRNA target position and function-related axons in gene of interest. We need to avoid target position being too close to N or C terminal of GOI. For knock-in, we need to select the gene insertion position on genome, and it should be around plus minus 30 NT. When it is not able to find appropriate insertion position that can GG PAM sequence for SPK9, 
We will need to use other cast proteins with different PEN, such as cast 12A. There are many online tools to help with the SGRND line, where the operator only need to input the selective target sequence from gene of interest, and online tools will output out with scores based on many behind principle setting tools, such as, such as the GC content, the length of target sequence, its patch matching consideration, as well as the PEM sequence. Here we list the commonly used online sgRNA design tools, such as Chop Chop. It contain it covers genes from various species, such as human, mice, rat, and it also be, can be used for multiple cas proteins, such as Cas9, Cas12A. The design sgRNA must be validated experimentally to evaluate the performances. Here we have an interesting demonstration. First, the picture. We have the data for knockout in jerky cells. Clearly, different sgRNA showed great differences about efficiency. Then we pick up two sgRNA, which have identical efficiency in the first experiment to the primary T cells with the same target. The results show dramatic differences this time, indicating both the sgRNA and the working cell type affect the final gene editing results. Thus, for SAFE, generally, we recommend it to design 5 to 6 sgRNA for further screening and validation. With the selected SGCAS9 and sgRNA, we can assemble the RNP complex. So first, we need to consider the mole ratio between these two. The first figure showed that with different ratios, the knockout efficiency varied greatly with the fixed RNP amount. And um, the total amount for an RNP complex also matters. Here we have an example showing the fixed mole ratio. By increasing the RNP amount, we can achieve greatly improved knockout efficiency. We have talked about the basics for RNP from Cas9 nuclease, sgRNA, to the construction of RNP itself. Multiple criteria have been mentioned separately in each part, but when it comes to the real experimental design, one should think comprehensively to reach the best results at the end. With the assembled RNP complex, we now can deliver the RNP into cells. For most cell-based gene editing experiments, electroporation is one of the most popular delivery methods due to its high delivery efficiency and simpler operation. It is also of less safety concern. Generally, it is practical to refer to suppliers' protocol for the operation of electroporation. However, it is also recommended to optimize the electroporation conditions for RNP transfection with the consideration for cell types, cell viability, and cell numbers. Commonly, the cell will be cultured for a period after the RNP transfection. One should determine the culture period based on specific applications Generally, the 48-hour or 22-hour data is analyzed for primary T-cell gene knockout assay. The result analysis for CRISPR experiment can be on the DNA level, RNA level, and the protein level. Of each level, there are common used methods. Especially on the DNA level, we can access the off-target efficiency. This can be done in June-wide analysis as well as by evaluating the predict of target locus. T7E1 mismatch detection assay is widely used for evaluating the activity of CRISPR experiment. It is simple but not very accurate as it is not analyzing the genome sequence directly. The Sanger and NGS sequencing are the most popular methods for analyzing the genome sequence directly. 
which help us to understand further about the basic effects of CRISPR-Cas9 system targeting gene of interest. The qPCR and the RNA stack are the methods for targeting the RNA detection, which help us understand the CRISPR gene editing at transcription level. Western blood and effects are used for evaluating the editing efficiency on the protein level, which directly show the expression condition before and after the gene editing experiment. With all the elements discussed, we have worked through the workflow step by step and discussed the key points for each. In the last section, we will give you the gene script solution for a high gene editing efficiency. In gene script, we have major two Cas9 proteonuclease. One is the widely used SP Cas9 white type, and the other is the mutant ESP Cas9 which was developed by Fong Zhang Group, as mentioned before. Both two proteins are provided in free grade, from IOO to GMP, satisfying your needs at different levels. Both Cas9 in three different ways. They all have very high KO efficiency. Here is an example. We knock out the TRAC target primary T cells. We achieve High 95% gene editing efficiency both proteins in three different ways. They are very high activity and the result is very consistent. Especially for ESP Cas9, as we already mentioned, it has an enhanced specificity. Here we perform TRAC knockout in primary cells. Using eye guide method, it is clearly shown that the off target effect is much lower than white type yes, SP Cas9 and the mutant from competitor. For different transfection scale, our nuclease perform the same step. Here we demonstrate the result in 20 micro 100 microliters system at the same time. And you can see clearly that their knocking out efficiency are very similar for both two proteins. And meanwhile, we actually are achieving higher cell, cell bioability in large scale transfection. The stability of gene script nucleus is demonstrated here. It is clear that under different stressed conditions, our proteins show very high stability, meaning that our pro Cas9 protein is, can be very stable for long-term storage. For commercial customers, we have many IND and BOA support for you. EMF of our product has been received by FDA as well as the document supports will accelerate your IND process. Our manufacturing facility is introduced here, showing our ability in manufacturing GMP products for ancillary materials. If you have interest in your product, you can contact with us. We can give you selection guidance of products here, like listed in this table, as well the application recommendation, manufacturing condition details, such as the QC release standards for RUO basic GMP and GMP grade of our. We can also give you the typical work conditions of our nucleus to help you to start with. With this, I will have to end today's discussion. If you have any questions related, please feel free to contact us with this email address support at jamescript.com. Thank you for your time and attention. See you.